Thank you, Sharon. I have two questions, two different questions, but the first one is the following. We know that the vast majority of Francophone immigration comes from Western Africa, if I'm not mistaken. Anglophone immigration, what's the destination in that case? What's the origin countries, rather? So the difference between Francophone and Anglophone immigration is that Francophone immigration, in most of these cases, it's people's mother tongue. But Anglophone immigration, in most cases, it's not people's mother tongue, but first learned or chosen Canadian language. So you might have candidates from China, Brazil. Uh, on a manifestement problem technique, suspect. We had a technical problem. We hope you that did not cause you any problems in terms of your hearing. We'll we'll check. Just give us a sec. Alors, euh, Madame Grou, si vous le voulez, on va juste suspendre la séance, hein, le temps de régler le problème technique, puis on vous revient tout de suite. We'll just take a brief break, just so everybody can...
Pendant la séance, je vais maintenant donner la parole. Est-ce est qu'elle avait répondu à vos questions, Mme Mention? Vous pouvez y aller. C'est notre mention. Merci, M. le Président. Mme Groux est très en train de répondre à ma question. Donc, elle avait mentionné que l'anglais était la première langue apprise au Canada par les immigrants anglophones. Et euh, elle était en train, je pense, d'identifier de, de quelle région il venait, ou en tout cas, euh, peut-être plus... Euh, euh. OK. So, it's not the language they learn once they're in Canada. They learn it before they come to Canada. Um, the linguistic competency that's required to apply for immigration, while people have a tendency to attain it in English, with English, and not with French. And they, if they want, once they're in Canada, they have access to French classes. They come from the Philippines, China, certain countries in the Gulf region, Brazil. These would be the Anglophone candidates, but the United States as well. So another question. It's in a different area. But you spoke about early childhood education and healthcare industries where there are pressing needs uh, in terms of immigration. A couple years ago, we visited the maritime uh, provinces and we were told that especially in early childhood the salaries that were offered to French speakers were inferior to those offered to Anglophones. To what extent has the situation been resolved when we talk about equity or fairness between Anglophones and Francophones in early childhood programs or other teaching training fields? In early childhood Recently, um, or in general, people don't really need specific training to work in this field in New Brunswick, but this has been recently changed and a, a, a training has been introduced. And if, if people have that training, the salaries are at the same level for Anglophones and Francophones. But for teachers, it's a good question. It becomes a collective agreement question. I think there are two labor unions, one for the French-speaking side, one for the English-speaking side. I, I would hazard a guess and say that the conditions are similar, but I don't really know. So for your province, how many Francophone teachers are there teaching in the Anglophone side and that could potentially teach in the Francophone side? And that would reduce the workload or help resolve the problem on the francophone side well i think one of the challenges is that french immersion is more in the anglophone part of the education sector so there's a critical mass of french speaking teachers teaching in the english teaching system but they teach in french because french immersion is on, would be on the on the anglophone side of things I don't know what the ratio is between Anglophone and Francophone teachers, but many Francophone um, teachers would be in that sector uh, than compared to the Anglophone sector. So this might be a good option uh, uh, for a solution. I mean, that that's good to know. Thank you.